Hey everybody, this is Ernest Gonzalez with the Office of 21st Century Learning at Tech and Design Team. And today we're going to talk about how you can use the rich content editor from within Canvas to help you design different types of uh, pieces in Canvas, such as assignments, quizzes, your calendar. The rich content ed editor comes up many times throughout Canvas, and it's the, the main way for you to design content for your classrooms. So today, what I'm going to be doing is creating just a, a page from the module view of my course. So notice I'm going to click on modules first. This is one way to design your content. And let's say that in the first week of school, this is how I have my modules broken apart right now. I'm going to click the plus sign to go add in just a basic page, right? So I've selected page, and I'm going to click new page. And I'm going to name this. Feel free to think about your naming convention, such as 1.6 here, meaning one is the first week or the first unit, and 0.6 meaning it's the sixth lesson of that. So I'm just going to call this page for now and click Add Item. Next, I'm going to click on 1.6 to go into that file. And from here, I'm going to start working on my page. In this example here, what I'm going to do is design a page that I'd like to use as a get to know the teacher type of page. Before I can edit anything, I'm, get, I'm going to have to click the edit button. And when I do that, the next screen you're going to see is the full view of that page that brings up what we were talking about before, the rich content editor. One thing I like to do when I'm designing my pages is use this button to drag the window just a little bit bigger. It makes it a little bit easier for me to work in. Now, you may recognize a lot of these tools from, from Google, Microsoft. It's all very similar for how you design your word processing, right? Um, so the first thing I may do is just type in a, an about your teacher section. And because this is a heading, I may want to highlight this and choose for it to be a heading. That's going to make it just a little bit uh, more appealing for your students to, to make it easier to see what that section of the text is going to be. Okay, so we have font, we have headings, we have a way to bold, italic, underline. We also have a way to change the color of your text and highlight it. All right. Definitely play with these and try to make these as friendly as you can for your students. Speaking of making things a little bit friendlier for your students, there are sites such as Emojipedia.org. Take a look at this. This is a real easy way to kind of spruce up your page and make it more appealing for your students. So I've searched teacher here, and I'm going to go ahead and click copy. Go back into my page, and I'm going to just do an edit, paste. So click here and do paste. And now I've added in just a little, a little uh, something to my page to make it look a little bit more interesting for my students. The next thing I want to talk about is a way to link out to any content. For example, maybe I may want to link out to another website. Um, so visit my SAISD webpage. Okay. So let's go ahead and highlight this text now that I've typed it. And I'm going to click this, this chain link button right here because now we can link out to other items on the internet using external. We can also use course links. I'll show both. External link, you paste in the address you want your students to go to. Very simple. Using course links, you have the opportunity to link to different pages that you've created as well as assignments, quizzes, announcements, discussions, modules, and course navigation, specific pages or on your, on your menu. Okay, so in this example, what I'd like to do is I'm going to just have it link out to the SAISD webpage for now. So I'm gonna click done, and I've now added that in as a link. Using the next button right here, this is a way for me to be able to upload images from my computer or bring in pictures that I may have already previous up, previously uploaded. So I'm going to click Upload Image. 
Notice that I have a way to upload and I also have a way to use this service called Unsplash, which is a lot of royalty free images that are available for us to use. So let me say for an example, I might be teaching science this year. So I've typed in science and I can instantly search for some images that I can use in my class. In this case, I'm gonna to go to the computer and click upload computer because on my desktop somewhere, I should have a little picture here that I can use. So I'm gonna click submit to add that in. You can make a picture a link, just click on your picture and then go into link. So I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna click enter to go down to the next line here. Our next, the next option is gonna give us a way to upload and record media. This is fantastic because maybe I'd like to record a little video for my students. So I'm gonna click upload record media. I'm gonna click on record right here. And hello everybody, here I am. I can click start recording to record a video message for my students. I can also click webcam and say no video. And now I have an option to record an audio message for my students. So I'm gonna try that right now. I'm gonna click start recording. I get a countdown. Hey students, this is Mr. Gonzalez. I'm gonna be your teacher this year. I'd love to welcome all of you to our class and I hope that you learn a whole lot this year. Looking forward to meeting all of you this year. So I clicked finish and now I click save. And you'll see that my audio was recorded there. That could have been a video as well. Finally, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the settings button on the far right. You may not see, this is your more button in, when, in your rich content editor. So I'm gonna click more and we do have an option for including tables and formulas, but I do wanna show you this last option here, which is uh, your apps. So I'm gonna click apps and the, the option that I'm, we're gonna just focus on right now is displaying something from your Google Drive. Now, the first time you do this, Google may, Canvas may ask to authorize and connect and say, is it okay to see your Google files? files? And in this case, I've already done that. So what I'm going to do at this point is locate a file. I have just a, a generic file in here called assignment, but imagine this could be my syllabus or some other kind of document that I want to make sure my students see on my about page. And what I'm going to do is click either embed to have it automatically show or link to create a link. In this case, I'd like for my students to see it directly right away. This is for my students and my parents to see right away. So let's scroll down just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. And there you see, this could have been uh, any amount of any information inside of a Google Doc that I want to share out. Keep in mind, this is not interactive for your students. It's meant for them to, to view only. There is a way to create an assignment, a Google assignment that your students get a copy of. That will be later on when we talk about assignments. We will look at take a look at that. Now, before we conclude this tutorial video, I want to remind you that this rich content editor is available in many different aspects and, and parts of Canvas from designing your quizzes to designing assignments and so on. And I also want to remind you that your students will also have access to the rich content editor. So as you'll see later, when you're creating assignments, you can create an online assignment that will allow them, the students, to respond to you using these same exact tools, including images and even video audio recordings. I hope that you uh, learned now a little bit more about the Rich Content Editor. If you all have any questions, feel free to send us an email at edtech at saisd.net or to visit our website, www.saisd.net slash edtech. Thank you.